committee meeting to order for uh, April 28th, 2022. Um, we have one agenda item, and one, only one agenda item, and then we have to get out to town meeting. So that agenda item is the Parker Principal Search Process Review and Approval. And Dr. Wilczewski, would you like to get us started? Great. So I very reluctantly am up here to speak about the Parker Principal Search. Uh, as the community may know, uh, earlier this week, uh, Principal Shanklin announced that she'll be uh, moving to Arizona with her family. Uh, so we are we're thrilled for, for Ricky and for her family, but obviously very disappointed for our, for our community, I think. Uh, I speak on behalf of the entire community when I say that she's just been a tremendous uh, leader in our community, in the park community and our RPS community for the past six years, and she will be uh, sorely missed here in our RPS. So we wish Ricky and her family the best. We'll thank her and, of course, celebrate her over the next couple of months. Uh, but again, just want to start by saying this is a, a big loss for our community. Um, so jumping in, uh, in front of us we have the draft uh, Parker Middle School Principal Search Process. Uh, you'll see out outlined here what the process will look like and also the timelines. So I'm going to move through this quickly and then also open it up to the committee for any questions and feedback. This follows a similar process and timeline that we use for the Woodhead Search. The first question I've got over the past couple of days has been just like, so what's the outlook on the search? How are you feeling? I think. I mean, we're, we're cautiously optimistic in the search, but I think there's three things that make the search particularly challenging. One, it is tough to find a really good middle school principal. Uh, two, the job market we know right now is really difficult. And then three, just the timeline, you know, here's a little bit tight to the end of the year. Uh, with that said, we've already been in touch with, you know, some good candidates who may be interested. I think a lot of our staff is using their personal and professional networks to try to find uh, talent who may be interested. So again, we're cautiously optimistic, but again, you know, there's some challenges for us moving should also say that we're hopeful that this search will lead to the hiring of a great full-time candidate if we feel like that during the search process that's not headed in that direction and we just don't have the talent in the pool, we'll be prepared to pivot to uh, other options, potentially interim, one-year interim, uh, if we have to go in that direction. But again, we're really focused on right now building a strong pool and then seeing what the process needs us. Uh, outlined in front of us, you'll see we posted the position on Tuesday to a variety of different sites. That doesn't enlist here that everyone, again, in the district using personal networks to spread the word. Here tonight to talk about the process and timeline. On May 3rd, we'll be having a virtual community meeting to discuss the search process and quality of a new leader. That'll be open to both partner students and caregivers. So we're going to uh, ideally split that room, the Zoom room, into two groups to have a student room and also have a caregiver's room. If people only have, have one device to use in that space, that's okay. Parents can come, caregivers can come to the student room, students can come to the caregiver room. It's not super strict on that, but again, creating a space for both students and caregivers during that, that session. Follow that up with a partner staff meeting to talk again about the process and discuss qualities with the next leader. We'll follow up on May 5th with a survey. So those who can't attend that, that's totally okay. You'll have a chance to share in writing sort of your thoughts on what you're looking for in the next principal. Uh, and then we'll also share a survey link for those to express interest in serving on the screening committee. Uh, the screening committee composition is listed up above. As you see here, we're planning to have one district administrator, one district principal, one school committee member. We'll hope that we can decide tonight. Four staff members and four caregivers. An organizational meeting with the screening committee on May 11th to talk about the process and organize and make sure we have our, our questions set, our plan set. Um, then on May 17th, full steam ahead, the applications are due. Uh, we will then, uh, myself and the HR director, bring forward all the qualified candidates forward to the screening committee to select those candidates for interview and review the resumes and then conduct first round uh, candidate interviews later that week. Uh, again, tentative dates on May 19th and May 20th. We've listed there a time of 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Once we're together with the screening committee, uh, we anticipate it being about a 10-hour commitment over those two days. But again, we're going to be able to flex that over a couple of days, depending on the availability of candidates and the availability of the screening committee. The goal is to select the finalist candidates by May 23rd, and then to move to that final process, which will include the following. Uh, inter interviews with uh, our central office leadership team, interviews with the partner staff, partner students, and partner community, and then also a partner site visit where the candidates will walk alongside myself, uh, Principal Shanklin, maybe some other staff to be able to walk through classrooms, talk about what they're seeing in classrooms, interact with students and staff, uh, just sort of on the day in, day out, sort of uh, informal basis. We'll then conduct reference checks, uh, listen to the feedback that we heard, and hopefully offer uh, in the, the uh, extended offer by May 3rd. We realize that this is a, a tight timeline. Um, we also know that if we extend the timeline out, we're moving into June, which gives difficulty in finding more candidates. It's also difficult limits the ability that we have for this uh, next leader to overlap and spend time with Principal Shank, which we think will be a critical part in this process. Um, so at this point, I'll pause for any questions or feedback from the Sure. Uh, Dr. Shank, Thank you. 
partners to cancer who maybe haven't been in searches yet and feel like they really want to be in Reddit or they're really interested in Parker. Uh, so that this could be a real draw for them too. So we spoke with actually a couple of candidates now who haven't applied to any other positions, but feel like this is sort of where they would want to be and feel like this would be a, um, the right sort of match for them too. So hopefully we'll have some of it in that um, bowl too. But to your point, I think we're doing every piece of vetting on candidates that we possibly can to make sure that it would be a good fit. Sure. Uh, so, huge shoes to fill, I think, with Historically, but I'm wondering if there's a way to include students in some way on the screening committee. Um, I've been getting a lot of feedback since Ricky made her announcement earlier this week from students directly about their concerns about the search, their request questions that they'd like to ask, and so certainly I've been passing those along, but I think it's reflective of who they'd like to have a voice in the search, um, and the majority of those questions have been themed around um, the inclusive community that Ricky has created. Great question. We we did discuss that sort of. I, I think I discussed that with a few committee members too. Of just how do we make sure we have student voice in the process? And we felt that the, the way to have the students uh, best involved was once we put the candidates forward, three candidates to be able to then have them in the finals process. We have be not just one person at the table, but to have a broad sort of uh, scope of uh, uh, students in front of them for them to be able to give their thoughts and feedback. Uh, there are, you know, we had some concerns just with, with ages, you know, middle school around confidentiality and some of the risks in that part too. So I think that that was probably the biggest reason why we shy away from uh, middle school students on the screening committee. But I think that we are really eager to have student voice throughout all the different phases in that. Um, it was a hard decision for our team. We ultimately thought that that was sort of the, the way we needed to get to that. All the questions that I wonder if there's a way Zoom is too intimidating, you know, in a large group setting. If there's a way to have smaller groups with students, um, the finalists in some way to make them feel like they're included in the process as well. That, that's great feedback, and I think what I'm, I'm hopeful to do is when we get to that final phase of the process, to work closely with Princess Shanklin, who I think knows her students sort of the best, and a lot of different student led groups to figure out how does it make sense to facilitate this process. I think part of it will be different depending if we have one candidate, two, three, four. Um, but I, I think your point is, is well taken and we're, we're certainly aligned that we want to make sure that we give students, as many students as possible, the opportunity to sort of think through what this person would, this leader would be like in their school community to give feedback on. Great. Are you aware of nearby communities that are the middle of a similar position? Yeah, um, there's, uh, we have, like, in sort of middle section thing, we believe that there's one current middle school search. Um, and also in some neighboring communities, but we, we haven't heard much else about that right now. What kind of timeline are they on? Um, tough to tell. I think they're probably a couple weeks ahead of us, but we weren't able to locate sort of what the end target date was. Okay, thanks. A couple questions. Um, I noticed in the May 3rd, we're limiting it to Parker students and caregivers. At this point, we have a bunch of rising fifth graders coming in as well. Can we consider expanding to the J.D. Barrows and Kellum community that will be part of the Parker community on a go-forward basis? I think that's great feedback, absolutely. Um, and to that point, or to, to Aaron's point, but to, to a degree, you know, looking at it, and I know that it's going to be an intense you know, period of time, but we have, a, we have what I would call a little bit of squishy room in there in the May 19th, May 20th, May 23rd, May 25th, May 27th time frame. If we need to, can we contract that a little bit so we can get that higher out before that, that we can't help ends up yeah. appropriately? Yeah. Um, I think it's the, the committee probably knows me by now, but we're going to try to move things forward as, as fast, as urgently as we can, in a way that we don't sort of also compromise the process too. So I think that this is a tentative timeline. If we feel like we're going to potentially lose candidates, or if we feel like you know, we can move it forward to get more overlap with Princeton Shanklin, and all those things will certainly consider that. Uh, there is that little bit of buffer in there, so we're definitely uh, mindful. I was nervous to put that on paper because I didn't want the community to think that we were also rushing a search, so I wanted to provide us with this couple of buffer dates in there. Um, I think your point too also is we don't anticipate this being a super large pool, so we may be able to kind of move things a little bit quicker to on that. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking if you're, if you're having the interviews on the first on the Monday and Tuesday, you don't have to wait till Friday to make a decision on the finalists in, in, in most cases, right? Correct. Because that, that committee will have seen them all, they can make the decision on that Tuesday. And um, the other thing I noticed is the difference between this and what we uh, what you pulled together for Wood End and the, 
might just be the differences in the schools is I don't see this PTO or school council in some sort of representation. Is that just because we haven't been able to establish that connection yet, or is there a plan to fill that up? Yeah, I don't remember if I explicitly listed the PTO connection on the form before. Uh, I know that I worked really closely with the PTO throughout the process. So what I did before was once we kind of had the process posted, I just reached out and got in touch with the PTO presidents, and then we were texting, emailing, you know, talking throughout the process, and they helped me organize and coordinate a lot of these different pieces of messaging. That will be the same way I plan to use the Parker PTO. So once this is approved tonight, or ideally approved, we'll move forward tomorrow. I'll send out a message to the Parker community, reach out to the PTO presidents, get them on board right away, and also get their support in messaging the process, messaging the ways people can be involved, helping me to coordinate the, um, through the, the virtual meeting day and all those different things. Great. To uh, address the school committee member, do we have any other volunteers who want to be there? <laughs> Maybe the two of you coming in. You want to do rock, paper, scissors to see which one of you it's going to be, or how do you want to decide? I have four more years as a Parker parent. I'm also currently a school council member at Parker, so I have to check that box. But um, very invested, given how much longer I will have to come there. Are you okay seating, Sarah, since you're almost done with Parker? Okay, so it'll be Aaron then at the school committee member for you. Um, okay, so we do have to formally approve the search process uh, according to our policies. So, Sean, do we have a motion? I move to approve the Parker Principal search process as outlined in the memo. We have a second. Seconded by Carla. Any further discussion before we vote? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? And it passes 6 to 0. All right, that's our entire set of business tonight. Do I have one more motion, please? Move to adjourn. <laughs> Move to adjourn by Chuck. Second. Second by John. All in favor? All opposed? Seeing none, we're adjourned. <laughs>